Welcome to SEO Daily. I'm Gauri Kasha for the Supreme Court Observer. SEO's focus today is shifted to the busy corridors of the Delhi High Court. Justice Rajneesh Bhatnagar and Siddharth Mridul rejected bail to activist Umar Khalid. Khalid was arrested in September 2020 for allegedly conspiring and instigating the 2020 Delhi riots, which took place during the protests against the Citizenship Amendment Act 2019. He was charged under uh, various provisions of the Indian Penal Code for rioting, murder, unlawful assembly, and for terrorist activities and conspiracy under the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act, nineteen sixty-seven. So Khalid has been in prison for over two years since his arrest in September twenty twenty for conspiring and instigating the twenty twenty Delhi riots. To tell us more about the charges against Khalid and what the bail rejection today means, I have SEO's court reporter Ayushi Saragi joining us from Delhi. Hi Ayushi, thanks for joining us. Hi. Today. So, uh, Ayushi, Mr. Khalid's bail application has had quite a journey. In uh, July 2021, Khalid failed for bail before the Sessions Court. After eight months of hearings on March 24, 2022, the Delhi Sessions Court denied bail to Umar Khalid, and the additional Sessions Judge Amitabh Rawat stated that the pr- preliminary assessment of the case showed that Khalid masterminded a larger conspiracy in the Delhi riots. On April twenty second, twenty twenty two, Khalid appealed the Sessions Court order before the Delhi High Court. Now, after five months, the Delhi High Court has rejected his bail as well. So, can you tell us what the main reasons were for the Delhi High Court to deny bail in his case? Justice Rajneesh Bhatnagar authors this judgment for himself and Justice Siddharth Mridul. Justice Bhatnagar is understanding that the court has a very limited role to play in UAP bail cases, as what seems to have worked against Khalid today. The National Investigative Authority, that is the NIA, builds the case against any UAP accused and files all the evidence that they collect in a charge sheet. Justice Bhatnagar, relying on the Supreme Court's 2019 Vatali judgment, said that the court can only look at the NIA's version of events and evidence, as they've said in the charge sheet, without investigating this version to see if it's true. This means that the court took everything the NIA said about Khalid at face value. What did the NIA say? That Khalid was on WhatsApp groups which planned the 2020 Delhi riots. That he gave inciting speeches which caused people to act violently, and that he planned the collection of guns, knives, bombs, etc. in some of the riot-prone zones. Right. So um, there have been some unusual delays in the case. So first, uh, there was a six-month gap between when the FIR was first filed to when Khalid was actually arrested, uh, even though he was named the chief conspirator and organizer of the riots. A fact-finding report that was published this month, written by retired judges of the Supreme Court and High Courts and a former IAS officer, found this to be quite interesting. They were actually of the opinion that the delay showed the Delhi police's own disbelief against the charges that they had filed. Uh, and uh, later, even after the arrest, there had been significant hold-ups. The case took 11 months between filing of the charge sheet and the start of the hearing in the trial court, and there was a six-month delay before Khalid was given a copy of the charge sheet, which. as we know has famously run on for 17000 pages but even since then the bail obtaining process itself before the courts has taken a lot of time so this is actually quite interesting right uh, the case is bail under uapa where the bench is limited to assessing whether prima facie that is on face value there's reason to believe that the accused has committed the offense but how does this really work under the uapa and how much does the court really consider and is this unusual So the first thing to understand is that the UAP is a special criminal law, which is designed to deal with special crimes. In this case, terrorism. The idea is that some crimes are more serious than others, and so it takes more to investigate them and to stop them. So the entire proceeding under the UAP is far more rigorous for any accused person than it would have been under the IPC, which is the normal criminal law. Many provisions of the UAP, in fact, are currently under challenge at the Supreme Court for exactly this reason: for sidelining the fair trial rights of an accused. um so how does this work uh, how do you get bail if you're accused under the uapa say you've made a comment or published something that is considered a threat to india's sovereignty and integrity the uapa allows you to very quickly be arrested under a terrorism charge under normal criminal law you would get bail if you could show that you will not abscond or that you won't harm the investigation or act as a threat to the victims or anyone else around you the strength or the truth of the case that the police has built against you has very little bearing on your chances of getting bail under the ipc but the situation is vastly different under the uapa 
here you'll have to prove to the court that there is absolutely no reasonable grounds to believe that you committed the crime you are accused of now this task gets harder because in section 43 d5 the uapa says that the court can only conduct a prima facie inquiry into the evidence to see if you're guilty so prima facie you explain this on face value so a very surface level uh, analysis what does this mean now you the accused can only rely on the evidence that the nia has filed against you while you're trying to prove that you should get bail you can't bring any new evidence of your own at the bail stage to disprove any of the things the nia is saying you also can't take the court through the value or merits of the claim that the nia has made against you in detail because this is a prima facie investigation now all of these problems we see play out in khalid's case khalid's lawyer who is senior advocate 3d pius highlighted the inconsistencies in the nia's charge sheet he showed the court that at many points different witnesses testimonies cancel each other out he also shows that some witnesses testimonies change as they are interviewed over and over across a period of time in the judgment the court rejects all of these arguments with one answer the 2019 vatali judgment of the supreme court the court says the high court that is how can we decide if a witness is reliable without cross examination at a bail stage that is so early in the proceedings they say that the supreme court tells us that uapa only allows a court to conduct a preliminary prima facie inquiry before granting bail nothing more nothing less right uh, so i've got the the excerpt from the judgment that the that the delhi high court relied on here so let me just read read parts of it quickly which is um, so it says by its very nature the expression prima facie true would mean that the materials or the evidence collated by the investigating agency uh in the first information report must prevail until contradicted and overcome or disproved by any other evidence and on the face of it show the complicity of such accused in the commission of the stated offense it must be good and sufficient on its face to establish a given fact or the chain of facts constituting the stated offense unless rebutted or contradicted right this is the part that you are yeah exactly so i mean as you see there's a lot of hoops anyone must jump to get bail under uapa and for khalid that's exactly what's become the issue now one could say that the last sentence in the paragraph that you just read out now one could say that the last state sentence in the paragraph you just read out offers some breathing room for the accused which means that if the court must find that the evidence is good and sufficient there must be some scope to argue against the evidence right to show that it isn't true it isn't good it isn't sufficient mr pais raised this at the delhi high court in the hearings but in the judgment the court says that a comprehensive view of all the evidence that the nia brought in its charge sheet is good and sufficient to see a case emerge against khalid now how do you rupture a comprehensive view when the court says it can't enter into contentious details because the uap because of the uap's prima facie commandment so um what are umar khalid's next options then does he approach the supreme court so Khalid now has the option of going to the Supreme Court to appeal the High Court's decision um, if he wants bail. Um, the case would probably have gone to the Supreme Court even if the Delhi High Court had held the other way, if they granted Khalid the uh, bail. Uh, in that case, the NIA would most likely have appealed it. But there's a couple of things that you need to remember before he gets to the Supreme Court. First, he's going to the Supreme Court with judgments from two lower courts that go against him, um, which may not work in his favor at the Supreme Court. and the second thing to remember is that the supreme court has a history of reading bail under uap in a very strict way by the letter of law um and to limit the scope of the court to investigate in bail cases um very strictly uh we've traced the history of the supreme court when it comes to uap bail in seo's court and review which uh, we link down in the description um So these are the some of the challenges that Khalid will face when he appears before the Supreme Court for bail. All right, uh, thanks for the update, Ayushi. Um, to read her report on the judgment and the story so far in Khalid's bail application, head to SCObserver. In you can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn for updates. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.